Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Yas Norigoto from Fujitsu. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about the forefront of the development of for innovative on Linux. Uh, here is the agenda. At first, uh, I'd like to talk about summary of current status of development for NVIDIA, uh, its basis of NVIDIA on Linux, and issues of file system DAX. DAX means uh, direct access mode. And next, Luan-san will talk about a deep dive to solve the issues of file system DAX, uh, its support referring and native for FS DAX, and fix NVIDIA based reverse mapping. Then, we will make conclusion. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I have worked for Linux and related OS since 12, uh, 20, uh, 2002, and de I developed for uh, memory for trial future for, of Linux kernel and technical sub work for technical support for travels of Linux kernel and etc. And currently, I am leader of uh, Fujitsu Linux kernel development team. So in the last few years, I have mainly worked for NVIDIA. For example, I have had, I worked for some enhancement for us of NVIDIA, like fault location or fault prediction feature. Okay, uh, let's start the basis of NVIDIA on Linux. So, uh, the, at first, I would like to talk about the characteristics of non volatility it's past tense memory device, which can be inserted to DIMM slot like DRAM. So CPU can read and write NVIDIA directly, but it can keep data past tense even if system is powered down or rebooted. So latency, capacity, and cost have characteristics between DRAM and NVMe. So use case is, for example, in memory database, Hierarchical storage and distributed storage and QBR register and etc. And the famous product is Intel Data Center Passionate Memory Module, as you know. So, impact of NVIDIA is very huge because the traditional IO layer becomes redundant for NVIDIA. At first, uh, PageCast is redundant because it was created for slow IO storage but NVIDIA is fast enough without page cache. Next is sync system call or F-sync or M-sync system call. Uh, if user process call CPU flash instruction, then it's enough to make persistence. The third is system call. Uh, it means switch to kernel mode. Application can read or write to NVIDIA directory, as, as I said, even system core may be a waste of time due to switching between kernel mode and user mode. So new interface is expected for NVIDIA. However, uh, NVIDIA is difficult for tra traditional software. And many software assume that memory is volatile yet. So what will be necessary for software to use NVIDIA? At first, uh, it's needed to prepare for sudden power down. Especially in older CPU, its cache is still volatile. If system power down suddenly, then some data may not be stored. Next is it needs data structure compatibility on NVIDIA. It should not change data structure in NVIDIA. If the structures are changed, uh, software update will be cause of disaster. The third is it needs to detect and correct clasping data. If the data is broken, software needs to detect it and correct it. And finally, uh, software needs data area management. Software needs to assign not only free area, but also use area for reuse its data, even if it's rebooted. In addition, uh, kernel must assign the area to suitable process with uh, authority check. So, uh, there is a confliction of requirements. At first, the first is uh, a file system is still useful. Uh, file system gives many solutions for the previous consideration. Uh, format compatibility of file system, uh, data correction, uh, journaling or copy on write, uh, region management, authority check, and etc. 
So it's useful for current software. And but the file system is too slow, as I said. Traditional I/O stack is too heavy. So CPU capture is enough to make persistence. So need it need a new access interface to NVIDIA for next generation software. Uh, because of previous reasons, uh, Linux provides some interface for application. First is grid line, uh, storage access. Application can access uh, NVIDIA with traditional I/O interface like SSD or HDD in, on this mode. So application can use this mode without any modification. Next is file system access. Page cache is skipped when you use read or write on file system tags. And application can access NVIDIA area directly if it calls nmap for a file. But it needs file system support like XFS or EST4. And this mode is suitable for modifying a current application for NVIDIA. The third mode is device DAX. Application can access NVIDIA media directly if it calls MF for slash dev slash DAX device. This device allows only open, MF, and close. In other words, uh, you cannot use read or write nor any other system call. So it's for innovative new application with NVIDIA. In addition, PMDK is provided. Uh, it's a set of convenient libraries and tools for uh, file system DAX and device DAX. Well, uh, some uh, libraries uh, support a tran transaction for PMM applications, and some tools provide tools management in the DAX file or devices, and etc. Et So, uh, NVDM is shown as a device file like storage if, when uh, you use, uh, uh, you created a namespace. For storage access, slash dev, slash premium, and the number and S is created. For file system DAX, uh, slash dev, slash premium uh, is created. And device DAX, uh, slash dev, slash DAX is created. Uh, NOD controller can create this device when it's created namespace. Here is an example of uh, file system DAX operating. Uh, in addition, uh, you can make file system on slash dev slash pmms or slash dev slash pmm. Uh, please note one point. Device DAX is character device. So since you cannot use read or write for device DAX, you cannot use DD command for backup. So you need to DAX your command of PMDK instead of it. Unfortunately, uh, file system DAX is still experimental status. I believe file system DAX is a very expected interface. Uh, the management way of NVIDIA is almost the same with the traditional file system. So operator can use traditional command to manage NVIDIA area. Uh, not only application can access NVIDIA area directly, but also it can use traditional system call. In contrast, uh, device DAX requires poor management, poor management by uh, tools of PMDK. Otherwise, a uh, software needs to possess whole of the namespace. In addition, application cannot use many system calls in device DAX. However, uh, file system DAX is still experimental. Its message is shown when the file system is mounted with DAX option. There are difficult issues in Canaria for some years. So I'll talk what is the reason. So issues of uh, file system DAX, uh, what is solved and what is current state, uh, current issues. So in summary, uh, there are two big reasons. The first is the file system DAX combines storage and memory characteristics. Uh, this causes corner case issues of file system DAX. They are often difficult problem. Second is more additional features are, were required, but they, are, or they were difficult to make. 
Uh, the first, uh, each, uh, first feature is configuration DAX on and off for each inode. And next is co exist existence with copy on right file session. Uh, first corner case issue is update metadata problem. In file system DAX, we expected that application can make persistence of data with only CPU cache flash, as I said. However, uh, this also means that there's no chance to update metadata by kernel or file system. So, update time of the file may not be correct. In addition, if application use a write some data to file on the file system does, and a user remove some blocks of the file by truncate system call, a kernel cannot uh, negotiate it. So, data of the file may be lost. So if data transferred by DMA or RDMA to the page, which is allocated as a file system task, uh, similar problem may occur. So current status of update metadata problems. For general write access, like normal application, uh, it was solved by introducing a new map sync flag of MAP. When uh, this, uh, this uh, flag is uh, specified, uh, page fault is occurs every write access. Then kernel can update metadata this time. Uh, PMDK specified this flag already. Uh, for DMA or RDMA data access, uh, it uh, occurs in kernel or driver layer. Uh, it's solved by waiting truncate until uh, finishing RDMA or DMA. But uh, there is uh, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, card like InfiBand or video uh, card, uh, it's DMA or RDMA is occur in a user process layer. Uh, in, this, uh, in, in, the, in this case, it's not served. Uh, truncates cannot wait uh, completion of transfer because it's made too long time. Uh, fortunately, uh, there's a workaround. Uh, it's uh, on-demand paging. In ODP, uh, usually a driver or a hardware does not map the pages of uh, DMA or RDMA area for application. And it maps the page when application access them. So kernel or driver can coordinate metadata at the time. Uh, Melanox, uh, now NVIDIA newer card has a uh, such feature. Uh, next is a new problem. It's unbind problem. Uh, unbind is a CCFS interface to disconnect or hot remove a device. Uh, each device driver provides its handlers for it. Though NVIDIA is not hot plug device physically, its interface can be used to disable and switch the mode of NVIDIA namespace. For example, uh, to change namespace mode from file system DAX to device DAX. Uh, next is to arrow uh, that user can NVIDIA like normal run. Uh, this is example how to use device DAX namespace like normal run. Uh, this, uh, uh, this used an uh, unbind CCFS uh, interface like this. Uh, like this. But uh, Unbind is likely a surprising remove interface. Uh, there's no way to fail of un Unbind even if a user is using it. So it must be disabled forcibly. So a less condition was reported between file system DAX and Unbind in uh, 21st of February. Uh, to solve this problem, uh, file system DAX uh, needed to disable a range of NVIDIA area immediately. Uh, currently, uh, this is not solved yet. Uh, it will be solved after the end of Ransom's work, which will be talked by him, him today. His new code will help to solve it. Uh, next issue is uh, DAX on and off for each inode. Uh, its expected use case is the following. The first is need more fine grain settings. Uh, users may want to change the DAX mode depending on each file. 
and change dark start viewed by application is the next uh, use case. Uh, configuration is always painful for administrator. So if application can detect and change it, it will be helpful for them. The third issue, uh, third use case is performance tuning. Since the right latency of NVDM is a bit slower than RAM, user may want to uh, use uh, use page cache by desktop setting. Uh, finally, a uh, final use case is work around when file system, system uh, file system DAX has a bug. Uh, what is the, was the problem of this uh, this uh, uh, issues? So, if file system change DAX attribute, file system needs to change method of file system between DAX no uh, DAX and normal file, but they may be executed yet. In addition, data of the page cache must be moved silently when the DAX attribute becomes, and these problems problems were very difficult. Uh, fortunately, uh, this issue was solved. The DAX attribute is changed only when its inode cache is not loaded on memory. Uh, file system can load suitable methods for each attribute when it, it reloads inode to memory. Uh, page caches of the file are also dropped. Users can use this feature with uh, the new, new mount option, mount hyphen DAX equal inode. And that attribute is changed by a command. And here is an XFS example. Uh, please note one point. All, all of applications which use the target file must cross it to change the DAX attribute. File system will postpone changing the DAX attribute until dropping line of the cache and the page cache of the file. Next issue is uh, coexisting with the copy on write file system. The copy on, uh, copy on uh, the file, write file, uh, future of file system is here. If there is the same data block on different files, file system can merge it as the same block, like this picture. So far, if only file system manages such block, it was enough. Since page cache is allocated for each file of, uh, of the blocks, uh, memory management layer don't need to know it. But in file system blocks, it becomes a problem. Uh, Margin block equals margin memory itself, so it affects the memory failure case. Uh, there are uh, two problems to uh, solve these issues. The first is it needs actual copy and write implementation for file system DAS. Currently, uh, there is no implementation of referring and data for file system DAS. Uh, IOMAP, uh, which is a new IO block layer instead of overhead, has interface for copy and write file system already. And XFS file system DAS also use IOMAP. But there's no code to use copy and write and DAX at the same time. Next issue is very difficult. It needs to check plural files from a module page or module block. When a memory failure occurs, it needs to kill process, uh, processes of which use the memory. To achieve it, uh, kernel needs to find all processes from the module page or module block. But the module page has only one struct page. There is no space in the struct page for plural files in it. So, uh, Ransom will talk how to solve them. Okay, Ransom talk uh, from here. Uh, please, uh, please give uh, him authority, uh, the authority of the uh, slide controller. Yes, on my way. Um... Can you quickly, t so you should be presenter now. And can you turn on your microphone? We can't hear you right uh, now. Ah, now we I can, can hear, hear you. you. Oh? I can hear you. It's okay. It looks okay. Really? Can okay. James?
right? Okay. I don't hear anything. Sorry, and James. James doesn't hear uh, either. Uh, please go ahead. Can you? So in the bottom, uh, you see this little microphone, right? There are like three controls: a microphone, a telephone, and like a little camera sign at the bottom of the of the screen and the little micro you click on the little microphone and it should let you join audio if not you can control you if not you can also try leaving uh, the track and then rejoining, yes. Hello. We can hear you. Oh, 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 okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let me begin. Hi, everyone. I'm going to show you how we deep dive to solve the issues of file system DAX. I will do it in two parts. Uh, the first one is how to support reflink slash debug for FS DAX, and the second one is how to improve the NVIDIA based reverse. Uh, my name is Ran Xiang. I'm a software engineer of Jitsu Nanda. I used to work in the embedded development. And currently, I'm focusing on the Linux file system persistent library. Uh, here is the background of the issue we need to solve out. FFS is still in experimental stat status on XFS file system. It is because that Reflink and uh, FS DAX cannot work together. Uh, we can try to use them together and see what will happen. Firstly, create a new XFS file system with Reflink feature enabled, and then try to mount it with DAX option. Uh, then we will see the error message. And a more detailed reason is shown in the D message. DAX and on XFS is experimental. They cannot be used together. So what are the FS DAX and the Reflink, and why they cannot work together? I will explain them in the next page. Uh, the first one, what is Reflink? Uh, it is a file system feature that files can share their extents for same data blocks. The figure in the right shows the comparison between normal copy and uh, Reflink copy. The above, above part is uh, normal copy. It costs time and uh, storage space to duplicate the data extent. The below part is reflink copy. It won't actually duplicate any data extent. Instead, it just remaps the original data extent to new file. So without data duplication, reflink has these two advantages, fast copy and safe storage. Since these two files are sharing data extents to prevent both from being modified, we need a copy on write mechanism here. It copies shared extent to new destination before user data is written. So this is Reflink. And then what is FS DAX, also called File System DAX? It is the mode of NVDM namespace. In this mode, Page cache will be removed from the IO path. It uh, allows MMAP to establish direct mappings to persistent memory media. So, why on Earth Reflink and FS DAX cannot work together? Uh, we have investigated this problem in DIPS and found two main issues. The first one is 
we need to support copyright and the dupe mechanism in SDAX. The LMAP interface needs to be extended to support copy on right. The implementation of copy on right and dedupe should be added in FSDAX. Another one is we need to improve the current NVDM based reverse mapping by supporting a uh, 1 to N reverse mapping for NVDM. So let's start from the first issue support uh, reflink slash dedupe for FSDAX. Firstly, I'd like to compare what's the difference between the normal copy, a uh, normal buffer dial with FS DAX. Uh, here is a simple, uh, simplified write process of buffer dial. The main purpose is to describe what it does in IOMAP framework. Initiate a write from user space and then come to IOMAP framework. We will get the destination from IOMAP begin in XFS. In buffer dial case, it allocates delay extents. Then in actor, destination data is read from disk to page cache. User data is, be, is written from user space to page cache. Then mark the page cache dirty. In the last, there is some cleanup work to do in the IOMAP end in case of error. The dirty page cache will be synced to disk later. The sync job contains remapping work, remapping new allocated extents. As is shown in the figure, the, pr the process of using page cache indicates a copy on write mechanism. But this is quite different in FS DAX, even though it uses IOMAP framework as well. In FS DAX case, it allocates immediate extents in IOMAP begin. The actor also do the quite different things. Get uh, NVDIM address by calling direct access and write user data directly to NVDIM without any page cache involved. What's more, there is no extra work in our map end. Since there is no longer a need for sync, there is no opportunity to remap new extents. By comparing with the previous buffer dial, we can see that the copy on write mechanism is missing in FS DAX. So to solve this issue, what must be implemented? Looking to the IOMAP framework, we need to allocate new extent for copy on write use and store source extent info somewhere. Uh, so we need uh, we introduce a SRC map to store the source extent. Then we copy the source extent data to new extent and write user data into it. This is copy on write operation, which is needed in write and map pass. Remap is also necessary after copy on write. Our map N is a good place to do that. In the last, we still have to implement a DAX specific dedupe method. The first necessary thing is the source info, source extent info. IOMAP framework only uses a structure named IOMAP to tell actor the destination, where and how long the data to be written. But it is not enough for copy on write mechanism. To implement it, the source extent info is also needed, including its start block number, which means where to copy from the length, which means how long to be copied, and the flag if needed. Now, kernel developer Godwin has introduced another structure named the SRC map to remember and pass the source extent info. The next necessary thing is to fill the members of SRC map. XFS only fill IOMAP at the end of IOMAP begin. We need to let SRC map to be filled too. As is shown in the flowchart, when it starts to write, we find the destination extent firstly. If it is a shared extent, which means needs copy on write, we allocate new extent. The destination we found should be treated as source extent because all changes will be made in the new allocate extent. So the, uh, the SRC map is filled by destination extent. The L map is filled by new allocated extent. And then set the L map F shared flag for actor use. 
in the DEX actor, uh, adding copy on write mechanism is also necessary. The current actor only writes user data to destination by a DEX specific interface called direct access. It is used to translate our map to uh, NVDIM address. So before user data is written, we need a pre copy. See the flow chart. We see the flow chart. We, can, uh, we add a copy on write branch to get source address from SRC map and uh, copy source data to destination address we get at the beginning. After that, we write user data to destination address. In this way, copy on write is able to be executed in write path. Uh, in MMAP pass, adding copy on write is also necessary. Different from normal page cache fault, FS DAX has its own specific fault handler, page fault handler, which uses IOMAP framework too. But for now, it only finds the destination page and uh, associated VMA. Uh, to support copy on write, we need a pull copy before associating. We use direct access to get destination address, and in addition, the PFN, which is for associating usage. Then, similar with the previous, we get source address from SRC map and copy source data to destination address. After that, associate VMA with PFN we got at the beginning. So at this point, copy on write mechanism has been added in FSDAX. Uh, since FSDAX is synchronization, we need to remap extent we changed before right now. Otherwise, because the new allocated extent is not mapped, the metadata will not be updated. It, uh, as a result, the file will not contain the copy on write extent. IOMAP end is a perfect place to do this job. In addition, if something wrong happened in actor, it is also a perfect place to clean up those extents. Beside copy on write mechanism, the duplication is also necessary to be adapted to FS DAX. It is used to reduce redundant data on storage costs. The core function is to compare a range of data byte to byte from two files to check if they are same. Uh, there is a general compare function for normal, normal files by comparing data read in page cache. However, FS DAX has no page cache. So we need a DAX specific compare function to compare data by accessing data directly from NVDIM. As is shown in flowchart, direct access these two files to get their NVDIM address, compare data on it by calling memory compare to get the result, same or not. If same, it means the range of two files can be deduped to share same extents. Till now, we are able to make reflink and uh, FS DAX work together in write and uh, map pass. However, it just looks functionable on the surface. In DIPS, there is another issue to be fixed. Uh, as a block device, NVDIM permits file on it to share same data extent thanks to reflink. Since it is uh, NVDIM, we have to think it as a memory device. In another word, files are sharing the same memory pages. So the memory management layer needs to understand the shared block. In the next pages, I will show you how we solve it. As a memory device, memory pages may fail in hardware level. That means the page could not be accessed anymore. The tr kernel triggers memory failure to handle this failure. When memory failure occurs, the system will track all processes associated with the broken page and then send a signal to kill those processes. The track from memory pages to a file is usually called a reverse mapping. In this case, we call it NVDIM based reverse mapping. The current NVDIM based reverse mapping can only support one page to one file mapping. However, for reflink, 
Because files are sharing the same page, we need to improve it to support one page to multiply files mapping. To achieve it, I have thought of many ways. The first idea is described in the right figure. It was simple to be implemented and worked, but it is not a good idea because of the huge overhead. After that, I have tried solving it, solving it in many ways, but any of them was not perfect. Uh, the current strategy is to trace file system internal to find the one-to-end relationship, but there are some, still some difficulties needs to be solved out. Uh, let's see how memory failure signal works through the associated layers in kernel first. Uh, in the middle of the figure, we can see uh, two processes are sharing one DEX file. Then MC triggered because of the shared page inside the file was broken. Memory failure take over this exception and uh, initiates a reverse mapping from the top to the bottom. From MM layer, uh, device driver, block device, file system, files, and finally to all processes using the broken page. Finally, send signals to process to kill them by signal bus. So an enhanced reverse mapping is the key to solve the problem. Since it spans many layers, we need to implement the reverse mapping on each layer. The first one is from MVDM driver to DEX device. The second one is from DEX device to file system. This is the most complicated one. We need to introduce DEX holder registration mechanism to deal with different ways of using a storage device. The third one is from file system to files, which requires RMAP B3 feature. The last but not least thing is the compatibility for no reflink and the RMAP B3 file systems. For example, ext4 file system. So we will start from the first issue. The memory failure now accepts the PFN as its argument. It is the page-free number of the system memory. We need, to, we need to translate it into the offset in them firstly. And then, according to the mode in use, the offset needs a further translation by each driver. For FSDX mode, PMEM driver translates the offset linearly. For device DEX mode, the DEX driver needs to calculate offset according to the DEX range property inside. Uh, in this session, we only take FSDX mode into consideration. So for now, we have got the offset inside the PMEM. PMEM is also a block device, so it can be used in many ways as other block devices, such as making file system directly, putting, putting in many partitions, creating LVM to combine many PMEM devices, or even creating nested partition and uh, mapped devices. So to make it uh, suitable for each kind of uh, usage, we introduce a DEX holder registration mechanism to, ab to abstract them to into one behavior. So the holder represents the inner layer of a PMM. It is registered when the holder is mounted or initialized. The one behavior for each kind of usage is notifying failure into inner layers. They need to implement a notify failure interface. Let's start from the easiest one. Uh, the inner layer is file system. This case is created by MakeFS directly on a PMAN. There is no partition inside the PMAN. The reversed mapping translation only needs to remove the fixed block device header length. The second case is that inner layer is the partition. This is created by partition tools. It could be one or more partitions inside the PMAN. We need to find which partition the broken page locates in so that we can get the offset in inner layer the translation is to remove the start offsets of the partition we have located. The mapped device case is a bit complex. 
It is created by LVM to set or other tools. It creates many DM targets. The DM targets can be used in many ways as well, such as linear target, read, crypt, and so on. So before you introduce translation method, we need to introduce the reverse mapping for each kind of DM target first. This reverse mapping is the reverse process of the exist map interface of DM target. With its help, the reverse mapping for mapped device is able to achieve. We iterate all DM targets in the mapped device to find out which targets contain the broken page and then remove its start offset. After the translation, we need to handle layers inside the map device. This is uh, the interesting thing. The inner layer could also be file system or even partition. So thanks to the holder registration mechanism, the inner layer could also be treated as holder so that the reversed mapping for mapped device is able to go on. So on. Finally, it comes to file system. Reverse mapping from file system to files requires a map between feature, which is uh, by giving an offset and length, we are able to search for extents contains it. Fortunately, XFS provides the query API. The search result could be file content or file system metadata. For the former case, we need to send a signal to kill processes using this file and trying to recover file data. For the later case, it is hard to recover file system online. Just shut down file system and report error. Now that it is possible to find all files by the one to n reverse mapping and the original page-based process collection and the kill function should be modified to file-based. As we know, ext4 doesn't support either reflink or rmap b uh, feature. So we need to keep the compatibility for file, system, file systems like this. Firstly, keep the original one page to one file reverse mapping. This relationship is created by associating pages mapping and offset to a file's mapping and offset. It should be only associated once. Otherwise, error is reported. But to make it compatible with one to n reverse mapping, we make some restrictions to avoid the error. Just make it associate only once and only, first, only for first time. Secondly, keep the original reverse mapping routine. With the support of first compatibility, the original page-based reverse mapping still works. So keep it and uh, fall back to it when we, go, when we get operation not support error in the one to n routine. So uh, the one to n reverse mapping has been implemented so far. Uh, it can be comfortable for all NVIDIA modes, comfortable for all usage of PMAP, comfortable for all file systems with more driver or file system support in the future. Now, we have some future work to do, uh, such as fixing the race condition against the uh, unbind. With the help of the one to n reverse mapping, I think uh, this can be fixed. We hope my code can help this case. Then let me make a, a simple conclusion of, of today's session. We have talked about the basics of uh, NVIDIA for Linux and, and the issues of file system DAX and how we deep dive to solve the issues of file system DAX. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was uh, perfectly on time. Uh, we do have a 15 minute oh. <laughs> coming up and we can uh, we can no problem. I looked at your slides. So uh, we uh, can no problem answer questions um, and go a, a little bit into the break. This is not a problem. But if no one has any questions, we will resume uh, at, in 15 minutes. Okay.
Okay. And I do encourage people really to uh, turn exactly turn on the camera and ask their questions. <laughs> hey, Derek. Oh, hi, Derek. Hello. Uh, so I have. Well, okay. since we haven't actually had any other DAC sessions at LSF this year, I was kind of wondering. All right, I was particularly curious about to hear from you and Dan. Oh, look, there's Dan about what's Christoph going on about, about let's completely divorce PMEM from the block layer and rip out all that stuff and then re and apparently re-implement LVM type things on top of PMEM? Oh. If anyone else would like to ask a shorter and less loaded question, they, they're perfectly welcome to go ahead of me, but But I was kind of wondering, like, do, does everybody, is that the plan of record for PMEM going ahead? Like, completely disassociate it from the block layer and all of it's gone? And, like, I guess we'll just have to rewrite all of XFS2 or what? You want to jump in here, Xiang? Or I can, I can try to take that one. Um, like, if, if, if you look at some of the problems that the device ever caused, like every time we do anything interesting in, in DAX, we have to go plumb like every single device mapper target with, with, new, with, with, with new functionality. Um, the other thing that uh, like this stuff is just memory. So like remapping it and, and concatenating it and doing that is, is pretty trivial. Um, so uh, like a, a lot of the complexity the device mapper has for block devices and and splicing bios and all that kind of stuff is just not important for for this stuff. Um, we also have the we also have the case that like uh, that people are wanting to chop these things up and make them discon make them make them discontiguous and and discontig this this continuity is not something that block devices ever kind of done. They've had partitions that are contiguous, but DEX devices don't really need that. And it's actually been pretty flexible to get to do that. Um, and then, and then lastly, like this, the new CXL stuff is going to allow you to combine devices and, and, and inter interleave devices and, and, and basically do, do a lot of RAID kind of type things at the hardware level. And so uh, at that point, like, like, the, it, like yeah, we're, 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 the, the hardware is replacing device mapper. There's cleaner ways to do it. And, um, and we don't have to keep plumbing. Every, every time we want to do anything interesting in DAX, we don't have to keep plumbing everything all the way through. Uh, five or six block to block drivers. So I'm, I'm, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about all the things that are going to break when when we lose block devices. But at the same time, like, it it's cleaner going forward that we don't have this kind of legacy. All right. Yeah, because uh, some of the things that have gone on on the list this week have set off a tidal wave of, wait, you guys are going to completely mess the whole thing up again. We we just barely got it working with, you know, <laughs> their large software, large well-known software project. I just got this. I just got this bucket of bolts back together. I'm gonna have something tearing apart again. Um, no, but like I, th I think uh, I th so. I think I think I think Christoph's plan was like was like, hey, we'll we'll, we'll deprecate it and then we'll delete it in a couple of years. I don't think it's going to be deleted. I mean, I think I think we'll add support for DAX mounting, and block compatibility will still be there. And it'll, 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 that'll never go away. So I think we'll have a legacy block path that'll be there forever. Um, but it won't. It just won't get new features like this, like uh, like this, the shiny reflink stuff, which is um, would only be for the new the new way. At least that's what I'm thinking. Like the, 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 there's too many people that are mount, mounting on dev pmem zero that not, we're not going to change. They've been doing they've been doing that for five years. We're not going to get. We're not. We can't get rid of that. Okay, and the other, the other giant question I have was about uh, the other thing that well, the other thing that Christoph was complaining about about how the memory manager still kind of doesn't know how to deal with this page thinks it's owned by multiple owners, and I mean I'm I am super afraid to wade into that discussion because look how badly Folios has gone. 
but uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of thought that the memory failure patch set was basically an end run around it. If we if you have these magic hooks to do it yourself, then we'll forget about the memory manager because the FS knows better and or something like that. And if you don't have it because ext4 or whatever, then we just assume you don't get sharing or fancy reflink features, which is fine because ext4 doesn't. And we'll just use the old MMR map path and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Or I guess given the other session earlier in the week about better error handling, we could also just tear the, shut down the entire file system and reboot the node immediately. I mean, yeah, but, but, I, but I think I, I, I like, that's what I like about, that's what I, what I like about Xiang's patches is, is uh, I, for the first time, like giving the OS a chance, like giving the file system a chance to participate in memory failure versus, versus like, it, like if you read the memory failure code, it, it, it's trying to guess the state of pages and it kind of gets it right most of the time. I think like asking, asking the agent that knows about it is, is I think is a good change in direction. Yep. All right. Well, I guess I'll get, well, next week, I guess I'll get back to poking around at those patches because I've seen that there's been like 100 odd email, emails that have got flown by on the list. And the only one I've had time to pay attention to is the, uh, what, RWF Clear Poison or whatever that has morphed into now. Uh, so okay. thanks. Thank you uh, for the discussion. Uh, what I wanted to point out is you want to keep uh, continuing uh, uh, the discussion, you can either move it into a hallway track chat channel, which is not ideal, but it's at least an option. The other option is all of the hack rooms are currently empty as well. So you can also just join a hack room and continue the discussion right there.